and war blend incongruously in this rural setting in England, now an aerodrome, where air crews of two Boston squadrons leave their rustic quarters to man their waiting aircraft ranged along the boundary of a landing ground, once the good green acres of this England. Great billowing clouds form a backcloth to a scene so out of place in a country setting, yet so completely in harmony with this country at war. Across the smooth runway roll the Bostons, while their motors seem to roar a challenge to the Hun planted insecurely on the soil of Western Europe. Each hour in every 24 is filled with the threat of terror from the skies. Rushing like meteors low over houses and hedges, the avenging bombers set course for their objective. And the target is the harbour of St. Malo on the Brittany coast. Now, with the shores of England behind them, the Bostons gain height to about 8,000 feet, flying smoothly over the sun-flecked water of the English Channel. Spread out below them, the now Nazi submarine base St. Malo. Bomb doors are open as the target comes full into sight. Bombs leave one of the Bostons, wobbling slightly before gaining momentum, and then hurtling downwards, straddling the docks and harbour installations. Many times a day to our pilots does our coastline recede into the distance. Wave top skimming is a favoured form of approach on the enemy. We travel out over the channel again, this time rushing at high speed towards the battlefields of Flanders. One more rapier thrust in the ceaseless and intensive RAF offensive, which carries us over the coast to the towns and fields which saw the fighting retreat towards Dunkirk. Today, over starved and pillaged France, wings of vengeance are sweeping over the rooftops. The Hun trembles as the Allied aerial armadas rule the skies. Over the Flanders plains they fly, on a low-level bombing raid on a chemical works near Lille. The plane ahead has already set it alight with incendiaries. Another Nazi-controlled factory has gone west. And what of the nights over Germany? No Nazi raid ever carried out over Britain can compare with the colossal attacks now being delivered over the Reich. Our usual raids are comparable to their worst. Our biggest four-figure raids almost unbelievable in the havoc they create. The hours of darkness over Hitler's Germany are about to be made hideous. The men of Bomber Command know well what they have to do. A calm, moonlit night. Everything ready and waiting, from planes to carrier pigeons. They seem to know the ops are on. Come on, fellas, get cracking. Yes, everything bang on, sir. Right here. Yeah. Silhouetted against a three-quarter moon, giant Lancasters loom darkly. At aerodromes all over the country, the scene is being repeated. A thousand bombers are massing. As the huge planes wheel about for the takeoff, the perspex reflects the light of the moon, and the oldest lamp flashes as if in answer. The flare path floodlight is on to guide the pilots as they take their 30-ton aircraft off the ground. The throbbing drone of bombers already in the air, the rising crescendo of others mounting to join them, and the night is filled with the music of a thousand planes. Hundreds of huge bombers are in the air already, heading by many different routes towards their objective. Millions of people in northern France, in Belgium and Holland, hear and know that the RAF is attacking Germany in force. And now for some amazing pictures. We're over the target for tonight. This is a German industrial city shortly after the arrival of the first bombers. Each speck of light down there is a blazing German building. But it is still early in the raid. At least 500 more aircraft have still to come to drop their loads of high explosive and incendiaries around the fires that have just been started.
To gauge the scale of destruction being inflicted, it should be borne in mind that at the height we are flying, the area represented by the screen is equivalent to two square miles. In another hour, the destruction will be far greater. The world knows what the Luftwaffe did to London City. The line of fire which you see now is equal to that, a mile of blazing buildings. And this is only a part of the huge total. The RAF cameraman as second pilot is ready to drop the camera and take the controls if the need arises. Although it does not show on the film except for an occasional flash, the German defences are very active and the huge aircraft is being swung about the sky in violent evasive action. town in western Germany can now consider itself safe, says Sir Charles Portal. As the nights lengthen, the area which our bombers can cover extends. Soon it'll be possible once again to reach Berlin. All this is only a beginning, says Air Marshal Harris. Before the end of this summer, the Germans will feel in real earnest the full force of our bombings. Germany has sown the wind and is now reaping the whirlwind. As the first faint light of approaching dawn touches the sky, the Lancasters with empty bomb racks return home. Hello. Oh, orange. Falling. Pancake. Aerodrome. Over. The men who are paying back a big debt to Germany return to their bases. More than 5,000 men in aerodromes all over the country are waiting to tell what Germany looked like a few hours ago. The full wrath of an avenging nation is being poured out in ceaseless warfare by the young lions with wings. The aerial multiplication table is mounting. This is the double-edged sword which strikes and strikes again.